Cornering is a fundamental part to cycling, especially when it comes to racing. Corner well, and it can be the difference between winning and losing a race. Corner well, and you will save a load of energy, giving you a better chance for that win. We all know the basics to cornering, but let's look at some of those finer details that are going to help us corner just that little bit quicker. Oh, she's quite fast, isn't she? I wonder who that is. What a legend. Before looking at how we can go faster around corners, we first have to be confident in our cornering ability. And this is something that does take practice and time. It just doesn't come like that, but you can lose it very quickly if something is to happen within a bend, but you do get it back over time. But once you have that confidence in your ability, we can now start looking at those finer details to go that little bit quicker. Right, undoubtedly one of the most important things that is going to help you go faster around the corners is having confidence in your tyres. Now we have all been there when we've been going around a corner and we've thought to ourselves, what if my tyres slip out from underneath me because there's not enough grip? Well most of the time you have a lot more grip in your tyres than you think and once you understand that you will start immediately cornering faster. A tyre with a grippy rubber compound is going to stick to the road a lot better. The width of your tyre is really important too. The more rubber that's on the road, the more grip you're going to have. That's why we see motorbikes use really wide tyres. But I guess they don't really need to worry about rolling resistance and all that because they've got an engine. On bicycles, a wider tyre is better for two reasons. Firstly, as you can run a lower pressure and that allows it to stay in contact with the road a lot better. And as well, the supple casing on the tyre absorbs the bumps a lot better, allowing you to have more traction. Tyre pressure is an important one too, but it can be a little bit of a compromise. Pump your tyres up too hard and your tyres are just going to skip over all those bumps and have next to no traction. Then on the other side, pump your tyres up too low and if you are going around quite a harsh bend, you do risk your tyre collapsing and in worst case scenario, coming off. But thankfully, there is an okay range between those two extremes. Temperature is another thing to bear in mind. When it's hot, the rubber becomes quite sticky, giving you more grip on the road. Whereas on the other hand, on colder days, you're going to have less grip. But when looking for a new tyre, do your research, have a look at a few different tyres and see what will be the best match for you. Another aspect of cornering that is going to help you go just that little bit quicker is the correct line choice. But get your line choice wrong and it is going to completely throw you off for the corner. Now it might sound like an easy one taking the right line into a corner, but say if you're in an event with lots of other riders around you or you know riders that might be a little bit less experienced than you, it can be quite a tricky one. But cornering with someone who is experienced and you have confidence in or even taking your own line choice into the corner is going to make a world of difference. Now we don't have the luxury of having closed roads every single time we go out for a bike ride so it's not something we can control that much. No two corners are the same so there is not one perfect formula for choosing the correct line. It all depends on a number of things like how sharp the corner is and the road surface. Once you've spotted your corner you then want to brush off a little bit of speed. Obviously, if you can see all the way around the corner, you can brush off less speed. You also want to scan the road surface for any gravel or drains. Then you want to take the corner nice and wide, hit the apex of the corner and then out wide again. And when this is done correctly, it almost feels like you've gained a lot of free speed because you haven't had to accelerate harshly or sprint, saving you all that energy. Undoubtedly, the best position to corner in is with your hands on the drops. This isn't just about having your hands down low and dropping your head. You almost want to bend from your hips, bringing your body almost parallel to the ground. This is going to give you a lower center of gravity and have your weight evenly distributed on the bike. You don't want to have more weight across your front tire than your back. And also it's important going around the corner to have your outside leg of the corner at the six o'clock position and your inside leg at the top. 
And you can also put a little bit of weight through that outside leg, giving you a little bit more grip. Now, when you're going into the corners, you're going to be naturally leaning into them. And the faster you go, the more you tend to lean. But you don't need to over-exaggerate this. You don't need to go to the extents that the MotoGP riders do, where they literally have their knee on the ground. If you're doing this, then you're probably doing it wrong. Those are some tips and tricks on how to get your cornering to the next level. But if you have any of your own tips, please leave them down in the comment section below because we'd love to hear them. If you did enjoy this video, as always, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.